Hey everybody, this is Jonathan McClanahan. I uh, wanted to show you a mandolin that um, I done a revoicing on and a uh, conversion on back around a year ago. This is a 1954 Gibson F12. And uh, just want to take you over a little bit and show you what I've done, but first I'll let you hear it. So here we go. Great job. Playability is just as smooth as the silk. It's got a great G chop, real throaty. Um, this mandolin here is this guy's main mandolin. Um, and, and I'll tell you, for years and years and years, it sat underneath a bed, and the story goes. And um, uh, sat underneath a bed, and it was nothing, nothing but a conversational piece. And, uh, you know, the guy would take it out at, you know, different jams they would have and show people. And, and then it was right back into the case, and, and he would grab out his other mandolin, and they would play, and that was it. Or get, take it to a bluegrass festival. And he told me that, uh, that you know, it was just looked at. And appreciated for what it was and then put away nobody wanted to play it nobody wanted to and there was nothing wrong with the neck absolutely perfect neck but the sound you know it just it just wasn't right and um, and so he really wanted uh, he really wanted it to come to life and uh, so he called me and uh, and we we put our heads together and now this mandolin right here sounds phenomenal and uh, I mean it it is an absolutely beautiful mandolin and the sound is amazing and um, so if you've got an F12 that uh, you know if you don't want to touch it that's fine I mean, if you like the way it sounds that's perfectly fine but if you want something with more of a bluegrass chop and a more of a more of an aggressive you know that that sound there um, give me a call. Let me take you from the peg head down and let you tell you what we what I done here. Um, first off, the mandolin sat for years, uh, which is the a lot of the story with with a lot of those F12s. Um, you know, in the world of Lloyd Lores and and the other Gibsons that that have been made and and uh, this this era is not the most played um, era of Gibson mandolins uh, in the, this year is 1954 and um, it had the uh, huge uh, as the pictures show I'm attaching pictures with the video but um, a huge paddle peg head and the uh, the tuners the tuner uh, spacing was angled out um, it was just really really wide so I shaved off the ears um, uh, plugged all the holes and, and redone the whole peg head and gave it a uh, modern uh, peg head um, and then took the fingerboard off uh, the neck was extremely extremely big uh, now it's about the size of like a Sam Bush model um, but uh, I took the neck down slim lined it it's a three piece neck as you can see just beautiful beautiful curly maple in the neck and um, so I, I slim lined the neck all this was taken I took this way way down down in here and um, gave it gave it the right contours and dimension but um, slim lined the neck down put a radius fingerboard on it while I had the fingerboard off um, I went ahead and redone all of this this was in in, in bad condition uh, the riser and extension here and had the white binding on it and uh, rebound it with uh, Ivroid side bound 
and uh, the contours of the top or the bridge. Let's go with the bridge here. The the bridge was uh, rosewood, and um, and it was it was that bridge from that era. They were really really thick on the top, and the base was real wide, just extremely wide, and um, the feet were so thin that uh, and and the and the bridge wasn't even contoured to the top. And that pictures to reflect that. So, um, but I went ahead and put an ebony lower style bridge on it. It had the clamshell tailpiece. I went ahead and put a James tailpiece on it. And uh, the top and the back was just extremely thick. This mandolin was so so heavy. And uh, and you can get a top and a back too thin. Whenever I talk about a mandolin being too thick, um, I'm not saying that take it all the way down uh, and too thin to where the top can cave in and uh, that's that's you can go too thin and they don't sound right too thin so you got to be really careful but um, I went ahead and re contoured the top got all the dimensions correct and um, also this scroll the ascension of the scroll should start right around here this one here started clear back here and I got a picture documenting that also it starts rising up here, so or back here, and that tells you how thick the scroll was. The, the scroll was probably a good half inch thicker, a quarter inch on the top, a quarter inch on the back than what it is now. And uh, now it's down to standard spec. So I had to completely re rework all of the scroll, the top and the back of the scroll recontoured all of that and this right here was all of this was just it just so thick so thick and um so i took all that down and got those dimensions right mcclanahancustommandolins.com and uh, you can look at my work there or facebook um there's uh, a lot of stuff on facebook with my mandolins now so um uh, give me a call let's talk about your uh revoice thank you